He never even wanted a record deal or to be a star. He just wanted to sing. Along his path to success though, Music Soul Child was battling some personal demons that, if not handled correctly, could potentially ruin everything. American singer-songwriter Talib Johnson, professionally known as Music Soul Child, or simply Music, was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. When he was a very young child, Music developed blindness in one eye from a freak accident. He does have some peripheral vision, but the incident severely damaged the retina. Fans will know that Music always wears dark glasses, and the reason wasn't known for years until he finally revealed what really happened in 2011. When I was mad young, my uncle was trying to feed me, and I was mad rebellious. I wanted to feed myself, and he was like, nah, and he was trying to take the fork away from me. So he was feeding me, and I wouldn't let go. So his hand slipped and jerked back into my eye. His musical education growing up came from the artists that his father liked to listen to, such as Donny Hathaway, James Brown, Parliament Funkadelic, and Sly and the Family Stone. In his youth, he built a reputation for being musically gifted, which is where he got the name Music, after people constantly referred to him as the Music Boy. He would begin getting attention for his talent around the age of nine, and by 16, he would start writing his own songs. Music originally came up with the name Soul Child, and wanted that to be his stage name. However, since people were already becoming familiar with the name Music, he decided that instead of swapping one name out for the other, he would just combine the two. He enjoyed blending elements of soul music with elements of hip-hop music together to create his own sound. He explained why in a 2017 interview with Revolt.tv. Just growing up in the hip-hop generation and being raised on soul music, hip-hop soul is an accurate depiction of the type of music that I make. I feel like if you just call it R&B, you're robbing yourself of the full experience. All you're going to look for are all the R&B songs. Yeah, I make R&B music, but that's not all you're going to get from my music. I'm basically a rapper, but I sing. Music's teenage years were not ideal. He dropped out of high school to pursue his passion, left his parents home, and ended up homeless for a time. He would go around Philly and get in on every open mic night he could. While making his rounds, Music would run into many other R&B and soul artists on the come up as well, such as Bilal, Kindred the Family Soul, and Jill Scott. He eventually made his way over to DJ Jazzy Jeff's recording studio and started laying down some tracks, some of which would end up on his first album, even though that wasn't the plan. Music wasn't even interested in signing a record deal or putting out an album. He just wanted to do his work, pay for his studio time, and put out a mixtape on his own. Little did he know, his writers and producers were going around trying to secure a deal for him. Ultimately, he chose to accept the blessing that was put before him. Music signed with Def Soul Records in late 1999 at the age of 22. He released his debut album, I Just Wanna Sing, in November 2000. That title would start a precedent, and music would become known for the unique spelling of his album titles. He told Rolling Stone magazine in 2002, It's almost like how kids spell things when they first learn their ABCs. It's just how you hear it, how it sounds. The album's lead single, Just Friends, Sunny, was released the summer prior and was also included on the soundtrack to the 2000 comedy film, Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps. It became a top 40 hit on the Billboard Hot 100 and reached number six on the R&B hip hop chart. The album's second single, Love, did even better, climbing all the way to number two on the R&B hip hop chart. What many people don't know is that album most likely would have never happened if music hadn't gotten his life together after a major bout with alcoholism. Things got so bad that at one point, he had a nervous breakdown and became hospitalized. He made a promise to God that if he got him out of the situation, he would put an end to his destructive lifestyle. Music did recover, and he did keep his promise. Music's success streak continued with his second album, Just Listen, released in May 2002. It debuted at number one on the Billboard Albums Chart and the R&B Hip Hop Album Chart. It also went platinum, just like his debut. He quickly followed up again with the release of his third album, Soul Star, which went gold. Music then took a break for several years, changed management, and record labels from Def Soul to Atlantic. 
That's not the whole story though. Music ended up at Atlantic in a trade of sorts between him and rapper Fabulous. After one of Def Soul's execs left, and finessed away for music to come with him. In March 2007, Music released his fourth album, and first on his new label, Love & Music. Two of the three singles released, B-U-D-D-Y and Teach Me, did very well on the charts. His fifth album, On My Radio, was released the following year. It would be Music's first album to not go either platinum or gold. That probably could be attributed to what it delivered. The lead single, especially, called Radio, was a complete contrast to the usual sound his fans were accustomed to. Everywhere I go, they always want a picture. Whispering in my ear, is there anybody with you? In 2009, Music became a father for the first time, after the birth of his son, with singer Camila Williams, a member of the R&B group 702. Early on, around the age of one, the child would be diagnosed with autism, and both Music and Mila would become advocates for awareness of the disorder. What would be his last album for Atlantic, Music and the Magic, was released in May 2011. He would go the independent route after putting out this project. Music became an author in 2012 when he released his book on love and relationships titled 143 Love According to Music. He summed up his purpose for the book in an interview with OKPlayer.com. My main objective for this book is simply to give one man's perspective on and his observations of love. But it's not a self-help book. It's not some dude who claims he knows all of this stuff about love. That's not what's happening at all. Anyone out there who reads this will be able to identify with this simply because these are things that everybody goes through at one point or another. In September 2013, he teamed up with Selena Johnson and released a duet album titled Nine. That number proved to be very significant to the project, as the album is a compilation of nine reggae songs recorded in nine days. The purpose of the project was to act as a testament of their varied musical interests, and as a way for both artists to break the boundaries of creativity. The following year, Music decided it was time to expose a different side of himself. In conjunction with this reveal came a mixtape titled The Hustle in July 2014. The Hustle, it turned out, is one of Music's alter egos and the name he would start going by. Also with the name change, mixtape, and an EP a year later, he also began donning a black leather crown and covered half of his face with a scarf. Fans were confused and annoyed, and as a result, Music would start to receive a lot of backlash. He made the rounds to explain his decision, including one brutal interview with New York radio station Power 105.1 morning show, The Breakfast Club, where he went back and forth with Charlemagne the God, who flat out said that he wasn't interested and didn't respect the change. Since people started referring to him as an auto-tune rapper, he maintained that he didn't want to be seen as a rapper, nor was he trying to be one. He also admitted in an interview with ThisIs50.com that a big part of the motivation for putting out the Hustle album was that he wasn't getting any love anymore as Music Soul Child. Now what inspired you to do the Hustle album? Um, because Music Soul Child wasn't getting that many shows as he used to no more because R&B ain't popping like that. I'm just keeping it real. At one point, Music claimed that he still considered the change a win even if people didn't understand or agree with it. However, the new name and look wouldn't last, and he would eventually go back to being music, but not before launching yet another persona the following year named Purple Wonderlove. Again, along with the new name came new music in the form of an EP titled The Eternal Peace EP. Also around this time, Music Hustle Purple also created his own record label called Soul Star Music Company. In April 2016, he released his first independent solo album, Life on Earth. The lead single, I Do, was his best showing in many years, peaking at number 11 on the R&B hip hop chart. In 2017, Music released the single Simple Things and Start Over in anticipation for a new album and his last to date titled Feel the Real, which dropped in September. The double disc 24 track album would be nominated for Best R&B Album at the 2018 Grammy Awards. Music also welcomed his second child, a daughter, later that year with ex-girlfriend Ashley Wright. 
The circumstances surrounding the event are not ones that Music has been interested in talking about publicly, and when asked, he noticeably dodges the question. The only indication of what went wrong can be found on Ashley's Instagram in a lengthy, heartfelt post in May. Prior to that, she gushed about her love for Music and their growing family, which also included Ashley's other daughter from a previous relationship. In 2018, Music became part of an ensemble when he put together the hip-hop soul group, Lumi Tries. The trio had already collaborated for years, so officially forming a group was a no-brainer. In February 2020, Music released another mixtape titled Do It For Dilla. It's what looks to be the first installment of a series called The Soul Brother Series. The project is inspired by the late legendary producer, Jay Dilla. It's a five-track collection of timeless R&B songs by the likes of Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, and Michael Jackson, just to name a few, set over production inspired by Dilla's music. 2021 has been a very productive year for music, and he shows no signs of slowing down, especially since he had to postpone many plans from the year before. He made a surprise appearance in June to participate in DJ Cassidy's Pass the Mic, the BET After Party event. He sang his debut hit, Just Friend, Sunny, alongside numerous other R&B and hip hop icons. In November, Music took to the stage at the 2021 BET Soul Train Music Awards. In the Soul Cipher, he, along with various other artists, rocked the crowd as they paid tribute to the 20th anniversary of Aaliyah's self-titled third and final album. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.